It's as much a pre-season tradition as training the house down. We're back with another episode of NRL pre-season predictions. Liam went pretty well last year. We had five and a half out of 10. Now, admittedly, that did have Luke Keery winning uh, a few medals and he only played about half a year. So there were still some wins to be had, but firstly, let's talk about exactly what's a bold prediction. We've got, we've got a fair few of them to get here. They can't all be the Warriors are going to win the Premiership. So what did you use when you're thinking of what's going to be a bold prediction? Yeah, look, you've got to think something outside the box uh, that not too many other people are, are thinking, um, not too many experts are putting their name to, not too many fans would be putting their name to. You've got to think right off the top something that's going to going to really strike someone and you know it's probably going to divide opinion 50-50 or yep. probably 30-70 against you a lot of the time if you're going something really bold. Um, so you're yeah. a crisis merchant, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, look, you, you've, you've got to have something that uh, that fans are going to be divided about. Yep. Um, and, you know, hopefully in six or seven months' time, you're proven right and, you know, you can you can talk yourself up a little bit. There's some fairly spicy ones in here. I just want to go through them one by one. I think we start with the Broncos. Uh, finished ninth last year. You're going to say they're going to finish in the top four. Yeah, I really like the Broncos this year. Um, I really liked them last year, to be honest, as well. They were playing some really good football up until about eight weeks ago. They were yep. in the top four. Um I think the big one for the Broncos last year uh, came down to Herbie Farnworth getting injured. He was such, you know, he was in such a rich vein of form early in the season. Um, he put them in that that top four hunt. Um, so he's obviously going to be back from a, from a long term injury now. Uh, so he's a big one out wide. Ezra Mam, um, he had a pretty solid first, yep. uh, you know, first season in the top grade. Um, probably would have come pretty close to winning Rookie of the Year. I thought he had a really strong year. Um, Ezra Mam, he's only going to be better for the run. Um, playing alongside a, an experienced halfback in Adam Reynolds can only help. Uh, their middle forwards are better than anyone in the competition as well. So I really like their, their middle forward rotation. Kobe Hetherington will miss the start of the season, but that's more than made up for with guys like Payne Haas, Tom Flegler, Paddy Carrigan. That's that's as good as it gets in terms of middle forwards. So you've also got Reese Walsh coming as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a massive one yeah. as well. Um, I mean, Tamari Martin had a pretty strong year when he was... Um, was out there last year for the Broncos, but Reese Walsh is such an X factor. Um, he's going to be a superstar of the game for the next decade plus. Uh, he's only 20 years old, which is pretty remarkable considering you know how established he already is in the top grade. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to be a, a revelation. If anything, that that first trial game, um, he's, he's already yeah. seemed to mesh well with his former club that he's he's gone back to. He's seen the light and he's back at Red Hill now. So Broncos are in the top four. Uh, you have the Sharks. You have Panthers. You have the Cowboys and Storm. Uh, Is that last year? South. Last year's South. 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 In the top four last so who's year. out? Yeah, look, I think there actually might be a couple of changes to the top four yeah. um, this season, but the big one is the Broncos. I think the Sharks will probably drop out of the top four. Parramatta, who made the grand final last year, they've lost a lot of key players, and I think they're, they're going to struggle to make the top four. Um, they should probably still make the top eight, the Eels, but they won't be in the top four, and that's why I've got the Broncos who just have such a star-studded roster. Their back line's got plenty of X factor. Their forward pack, as I mentioned, is, is as good as it gets. So I think they'll be making a big jump. Uh, might surprise a few people and, and challenge for the Premiership. Um, that Parramatta news will go re down really well on Church Street. Uh, I definitely recommend you going there as soon as possible. That would be great. Uh, coaches sacked. We speak about it every preseason. There's always going to be someone who's on the chopping block. Who is it? Yeah, look, you never ever want to talk about someone losing their job in, in any industry. Um, Coaching in the NRL is is pretty volatile, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we had a couple of coaches last year that I thought personally were pretty lucky to survive the year, one of them being Adam O'Brien. The Knights, since he's taken over, they went really well in the first couple of years and now they're starting to gradually go backwards, which is not where you want to be trending. Uh, he took them over towards the end of a rebuild. He was meant to take them to the next level and unfortunately hasn't done that. Um, Caelan Ponga is going to move into the halves again. Didn't work out last time. Not sure why he thinks it's going to work out this time especially when you, you factor in that last year he only played 12, 13 games, yeah. playing fullback, copping head knocks, injuries. It's only going to be worsened by defending in the front line and putting your body up against the likes of Viliama Kikau or uh, you know, James Fisher-Harris, someone like that. That's, that's not what you want to be doing if you, you know, you're, you're struggling with injuries and concussions and the like. Uh, the other coach I think might struggle is Justin Holbrook. Um, there were reports towards the back end of last year he was on thin ice. They've recruited some, some solid players. Kieran Foreman's obviously very experienced. Sam Verrells has won a premiership, but he struggled with injury. Um, I just don't think they have the depth in their roster, unfortunately, and I think, uh, I think they're probably going to be towards the bottom four, and uh, if they can't string some wins together early, I think Justin Holbrook might be in some trouble. I'm interested to see what happens with the Knights. They've got a pretty easy or 
comparably easy first six rounds. And then they've got round seven, eight, nine, I think they've got like the Panthers, Cowboys, and maybe like the, the Rabbitohs or someone's, and then they, they miss magic round. So I reckon if they can do, if they can gel early, maybe Adam O'Brien at least makes it to mid-May to magic round. Yeah, I don't, I, think, I don't think he's going to be sacked early in the season. I don't think the pressure's quite on Adam O'Brien, um, you know, in that first four to six rounds yeah. as it probably is Justin Holbrook. But if we're, we're looking long-term, 27 rounds or whatever it is this year with the, with the addition of the Dolphins, I think he's going to have his work cut out for him to turn things around at, uh, at Newcastle. I'm interested to see what happens with the Knights because I like, I've, I really like having Jackson Hastings there. It frees up Ponga completely just to run the ball. And especially if he's going to be running on the left, I think he'll be perfect. And then you've got Adam Elliott, who's going to be the lock forward. I think he'll definitely get that over Kurt Mann, um, who's a great ball runner. Runs great holes on the right. I think it'll I think it will work out decent. But I am interested to see what happens in defence because theirs was woeful. <laughs> okay, so we've spoken about negatively about coaches. Let's talk negatively about players. No, teams. Spoon. Lots of people are saying the Dolphins. Yeah, look, the Dolphins and the Dragons are the, the two teams that everyone uh, seems to think are going to be battling it out for the wooden spoon. I don't think the Dragons are that bad. Uh, they're certainly not going to make the finals. They've got an, you know, enough quality in their roster that they should probably be avoiding the wooden spoon. Yep. The Dolphins, they're going to be pretty close, but I think the experience in their forward pack is certainly going to help. Um, and they've got some talented young players as well. And of course, you can't, can't forget Wayne Bennett. Um, he's, I can't see him letting a team he's in charge of finishing with the wooden spoon. It just, it's just not going to happen. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, I think for the first time in their history, it's going to be the New Zealand Warriors uh, who are going to get the uh, the wooden spoon this year. They've signed quite a few players, but none of them strike me as, as players that are going to turn them around. Um, and those teams that were around the bottom four with them last year, they've all gotten a lot better. I mean, on paper at least, but they've all gotten a lot better. There's a new coach, an ageing halfback in Sean Johnson. Mm. Um, look, I, I think they're going to struggle, the Warriors. I think they're in for a long year. I could be wrong, but I think they're, they're finishing with the, uh, the wooden spoon. It would be interesting as well. They're going to be home for the whole year. That was, you know, people always kind of lent back on the last few years saying they're in such a crap situation. They're away from their families the whole time. Now they're at home. And as you said, this could be the first year where they actually get the spoon. Unlucky. Yeah, that would, that would be a rough return uh, to Auckland for them. But yeah, look, I just, I can't see them competing with the top sides. I just don't think they have the depth. I don't think they have the quality, um, even in their best 17 to, to be, you know, competing with the, the top teams. Well, riddle me this. The Bulldogs, the Tigers, move big time in the off-season. Plenty of acquisitions. Let a few people go as well. Will they make the eight? Uh, there's plenty of room for optimism uh, at both Belmore and Concord heading into this season. I think their recruitment for, for both clubs has been fantastic. Unfortunately, I don't think either of them are going to make the eight. Uh, I don't think they're quite up to, to scratch in some key positions. I'll start with the Tigers. Uh, you look at their forward pack and it's it's probably on paper one of the best in the yeah. comp now. David Clemmer, Appy Corusau, Isaiah Papali'i, John Bateman all coming in. They already had some really talented young forwards there as well. Uh, the likes of Stefano and uh, Sean Bloor coming back from yep. long-term injuries. That's going to give them a boost. The new recruits in the pack are going to give them a boost as well. A new coach, a uh, new coaching duo of Benji Marshall and Tim Sheens. Uh, be interesting to see how that plays out. They've got them passing a 1,000 balls uh, every training session, I've heard. But my issue for the Tigers is actually their back line. Their halves combination, <coughs> I don't think, is, is quite good enough uh, yeah. to, to steer a team to the finals. Luke Brooks has been a perennial underperformer for his entire career, really. Um, Adam Dewey, not sure where he sits in the Tigers' plans. Obviously, they're looking at Mitchell Moses. He's off contract at the end of this year. They've got a lot of faith in Brooks for reasons unknown to me. Um, and their back five is probably the worst in the competition. So I don't think the Tigers are going to have enough points in them and I think they're going to leak too many tries out wide. For the Dogs, uh, I think their issue is at fullback and it's at halfback. Um, Kyle Flanagan's had a couple of years there now, hasn't performed. Um, they've signed a, a young kid, Carl uh, Oluwapu from the Broncos. Yep. He's obviously the, the long-term man. They want to partner Matt Burden, which is probably not going to do much for Kyle's uh, confidence, unfortunately. Um, and look, I, I think he's obviously going to start the season there, but it's not instilling a lot of confidence. He just doesn't have that, um, that ability to, to break a game open um, like the, all the good halfbacks do. Fullback, uh, Jake Avarillo played there last year. He played really well at the back end of last season, I thought. And I thought he was going to get um, first crack, but Cameron Seraldo has seen something different. Uh, Hayes Perham, who's had you know, a pretty tough run with injuries at, uh, at other clubs like the Warriors early in his career. 
He's found a new home. He's going to get first crack uh, at the fullback position, but he just doesn't have the experience of the top fullbacks. You look at every other club in the NRL, and the majority of them have got you know really established fullbacks or high quality fullbacks. Uh, not to say that he, he can't be that, but he just doesn't have the experience right now. So that's that's the main issue for me for yep. the dogs. But everywhere else, they're looking really good. How far away are the dogs? Do you think in terms of years? Uh, I think if they don't make the finals this year, which I'm banking that they won't, yep. uh, they, you know, they, they won't miss out by much, but I can't see them making it. I think 2024, they'll definitely be there. It's going to take a while to gel with all these new players yep. as well, um, especially changes in the spine. Uh, Reid Marnie's coming in, replacing Jeremy Marshall King and Hayes Perham at fullback. That's two changes in the spine. Lots of combinations they are going to have to work on, on the edges as well. Um, it'll take time, but I don't think it'll take too much time. Uh, we'll stick with the dogs. You've been gushing over Paul Alamotti. Talk to us about him. Yeah, this kid, uh, he's, he's something special. Um, I saw, he's, the first time I saw his highlights might have been 16 or 17 years old. I mean, he's only 19 now, so yeah. it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> um, but he's, he's gone essentially straight from SG Ball, played one game of Jersey Flag, straight into the top squad. Um, he's, he played New South Wales Cup for a lot of last season, tore that up. He's a massive body. Um, he's going to get first crack, I believe, at the, um, the centre role for the Dogs with Aaron Schott moving up to yep. the, um, the Titans. Yeah, he's just a, a big, aggressive um, player. He's got good footwork, you know, very, very good speed for, for a man of his size. Um, he's a local junior as well. He understands the Bulldogs DNA, which is so important to the club. Uh, he's got big raps from, from a lot of people already. Willie Mason um, has publicly said that this kid's the future of the Bulldogs, and I agree with uh, with Big Willie there. Josh Adokar said he's looking forward to playing with him. So from what I saw in, in their first trial game as well and what I've seen of him uh, in the lower grades, Paul Alamotti is, is one to watch, and I think he's the front runner for Rookie of the Year before a ball be, a ball's even been kicked. Uh, then you've also got Hayley Finau from the Dragons. Yeah, he's a, he's a talented young kid. Uh, we, we spoke to him recently. From the Storm? Yeah, he came came through the uh, Melbourne Storm system. He played Thunderbolts, which is their yep. um, their under twenty ones uh, team uh, for the last couple of years. Moved up, played pretty much a full season of Q Cup last year for the Brisbane Tigers. Classy little dummy half, straight out of that Appy Coruscant mould, which I love um, in a dummy half, and that's something that the Dragons have been lacking. Um, I think Jacob Little will obviously get first crack, but it wouldn't surprise me halfway through the season if we see uh, young Finau in there. Okay. Two very good Rookie of the Year options. I can get around that. Uh, origin. Is that ever too early to talk about Origin? Clearly not. No, never. You start talking about Origin on the Thursday after the decide. That's, that's, <laughs> that's just how it rolls. You've, Especially if you're from New South Wales. You've decided in a bold move to stick the knife in Jerome Luai. He's gone. Yeah, I'm personally a big fan of Jerome Luai. Um, I think when he first came into the Origin team, he brought an energy that um, you know they hadn't, they yeah. hadn't had. Um, and I really liked his, his first series uh, for the Blues. Last year, unfortunately, he wasn't quite uh, where he needed to be. And, you know, that New South Wales team on paper should not have been losing to, to the Maroons yep. last year. Um, no disrespect to the Maroons. They've got plenty of fantastic players, but they should not have been losing that series, New South Wales. And I think the big selection, uh, well, the first one that, that Brad Fittler needs to make is bring back Josh Adokar. I don't know why Honestly, he was dropped yeah, in yeah. the first place. Uh, but the other one, I think Matt Burden um, has shown enough in, you know, his time playing 5-8 for the Bulldogs what he showed even in the centres playing for New South Wales and then for Australia in the World Cup, um, he does pretty much everything better than Jerome Luai. Yep. Uh, he runs the ball better than Jerome Luai. He's got a better kicking game than Jerome Luai. He's quicker than Jerome Luai. He's a bigger body than Jerome Luai. Um, I love Jerome Luai. He's a fantastic player. Um, but I think Matt Burden is going to be taking his spot in the Blues lineup this year. Is there not something, though, that like maybe Ivan Cleary knows that why Luai was always chosen over Burton at the Panthers? I think it was it was more the fact that they were just going so well, and it's hard to change a, a winning team, yep. um, especially you know if you're in a key position like five eight. And Lua was doing nothing wrong for Penrith when Matty Burden was there, um, so he just had to bide his time, as all good young players do. Jerome Lua had to do it for a couple of years when James Maloney was there, and they were you know they were going well, um, but as soon as Lua got the, the permanent gig, he went well. Burden had to move on to to earn that opportunity, and look in a struggling Bulldogs outfit. Uh, with not much around him last season, he performed yeah. very well. Okay. You've convinced me. I can get around that one. Beautiful. Uh, two more. Scott Drinkwater, Dally M. Yeah, Remembering is... that you had Luke Keary as the Dally M last year. Yeah, look, I, I couldn't go uh, Luke Keary again as much as uh, I think he's a fantastic player and he's going to be a lot better for, um, for the run last year, obviously coming back from an ACL. Yeah. It was probably a little bit ambitious to, to pick him for the Dally M last year, but Scotty Drinkwater, what a story last year. Battling it out for the 5-8 position heading into round one with Tom Dearden. Missed out. 
was in reserve yeah. grade early in the season. I only got the fullback opportunity uh, due to an injury. And he came in and absolutely blitzed him, took the Cowboys to within a couple of points and, you know, a, a dodgy refereeing decision of a grand final appearance. True. And he was, you know, he was the, the forefront of their attack. Try assists for days, so much speed, line breaks. He, he's, he's an electric player. There's always been so much, um, you know, so much confidence in him from people within the organisation. Even when he was at the Melbourne Storm and now he's gone up to the Cowboys, everyone always talks so highly of Scott Drinkwater. And he just hasn't been able to lock down that... Um, you know, that starting position, whether it was in the halves or at fullback. And now that he's finally done that, he's going to have so much confidence. He's got a long-term contract, a bit of job security in the role. Um, and I think, you know, the other thing we all, I always look at with Dally M's is who else is around them? Who's going to steal votes off them? If you look at a team like South Sydney, Latrell Mitchell would be, if you were still allowed to, to bet yep. on the Dally M's, he'd probably be the favourite. But you look at guys like Cody Walker, Damian Cook, uh, Cameron <coughs> Murray... Keon Kalama Tungi, they're all going to, you know, steal points off each other week in and week out. Latrell has obviously had his fitness and injury issues as well. Uh, Nathan Cleary, same deal. Tom Trebojevic needs to stay fit before he can win another Dally M. Um, Sam Walker is another one that I think might be up there. But just given the fact that Drinkwater is going to have a full preseason in this fullback position now, yep. and he's also got a lot of confidence from from last year, plus the fact he doesn't have too many other players to worry about in terms of votes, I think he's the he's the one for the Daly M this year, and if we're talking about bold predictions, I think that's certainly one. That's fairly bold. And also, a slight little nudge there at the Sharks. Obviously, Nico Hines won last year. Nobody else capable of taking points off him. No, no, no. they weren't. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, proof's in the pudding. Now, obviously, here at Sporting News, we're massive about recycling, so we thought what we'd do is we'd recycle one of our predictions from last year. Uh, again, going with the Roosters, good point. Uh, going with the Roosters as the Premiers, how and why? Uh, look, I, I thought before a ball was kicked last year that they were probably Premiership favourites. Yeah, Penrith, definitely. again, just proved far too strong. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they were deserved uh, champions last year. But I really like the Roosters roster. I think that the young players, um, that they, they got a lot of experience last year. Look at Joseph Swali'i. Egan Butcher played a lot of good yep. football. Terrell May off the bench. Um, Sam Walker, he's really growing into that halfback position now. They did a, a bit of chopping and changing with him and Luke Keary, which I wasn't a massive fan of. Luke Keary's clearly a 5'8". Sam Walker's clearly a halfback. Just played them with the 6 and the 7 on their backs, respectively. I think those young guys um, having time to, to build into their roles, not having pressure put on them, um, is, is certainly going to help. Uh, I think the addition of Brandon Smith it shores up a... You know, not a weakness with Sam Verrells, but probably if you look at their, their starting 13, probably not yeah, their, okay. their strongest point. point. Um, Brandon Smith, you know, I know there's questions over whether he can play hooker but for, for 80 minutes, but for, you know, if you look at two years ago uh, or two or three years ago, he was the starting hooker for the Kiwis. He probably still would be. He's, you know, he's a dynamic player. He's not your, your stock standard number nine. Um, he loves to run the ball a lot. Um, but I think he's going to give them a lot of X factor and a lot of power through the middle. And then, yeah, you look at you look at the class that they've got throughout their team: James Tedesco, Joey Manu, Victor Radley, um, Jared Wairia Hargraves is probably in his last season with the Roosters. Um, you know, he's ushering in those those new forwards. Matty Lodge has re-signed. Yep. He was really good for the Roosters when he signed on last year. So if you look at their team on paper, I think you know the only thing that's going to stop them from from pushing for a premiership this year is injury or themselves. Okay. Where are we in terms of the peak performance kind of window for a James Tedesco? I think we're right in his peak, to be honest. I mean, he's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's tough to say. Yeah, I'm not sure when this peak's going to end. He's been fantastic for like, Do you think other fullbacks years. have caught up to him? No, no, not, not on an individual level, no. I know guys like Luttrell and Tommy Turbo have had good half seasons yep. in the last couple of years each, respectively. But James Tedesco, week in and week out, even when the Roosters aren't going well, everything that they are doing well... Uh, it's coming from him. Yep. Um, he's taken on that, you know, that extra ball playing role in the last couple of years, where he used to be more of just a, a strictly running um, fullback. Every everything in his game continues to improve. Um, you look at his performance in Origin. Like, even though they lost the series, he was probably the best player on the field in almost you know every game. Um, yeah, he's he's an elite player. He's probably still you know in the top three, if not the best player in the competition. Okay, that's good. Interrupted that. Let us know in the comments below which one outraged you the most. For me, it would be Parramatta dropping out of the four, but that's just me. Uh, before we go, though, ladder predictions. Do we just burn through them all? Put yeah. it here on paper so we can look at it again at the end of the year. I like it. I've seen it. I think they're good. All right, so 
Uh, we'll, we'll start from the top. Yep. Uh, I've got the Roosters finishing uh, in top spot. Penrith, Broncos, South yep. rounding out the top four. Uh, I think South Sydney, you know, they, they showed once again last year that when they get things clicking, they're very, very hard to stop an attack. They might leak some points, but they're very hard to stop an attack. Uh, just outside the top four, Cowboys. Um, they were really good last year. Just think it's going to change a little bit. Um, teams might find them out a little bit, but I still think they're going to be there or thereabouts. Uh, Storm, Sharks, Eels in the bottom half of the eight as well. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Yep. Um, Storm have lost some experienced players. Um, you look at the Bromwich brothers, Felice Kaufusi. Um What do you reckon about Tarek Sims? To me, he seems like an edge version of a Brian Norrie in terms of... So people, you know, when, everyone famously remembers when Brian Norrie went to the Storm and before he became, what, an NRL referee or a match review, he was kind of thought of being past it. Goes to the storm, Craig Bellamy completely reinvigorates his career. Is that not capable or possible with the Tarek Sims? I'm sure it's possible. I haven't <laughs> seen enough in the last four seasons to, to think uh, that it's going to happen, but it's certainly possible. Craig yep. Bellamy can work wonders with just about anybody. And Tarek Sims, is, he's been a representative player for a long time. He hasn't quite performed uh, up to his standards in the last few years for the Red V, but a change of scenery might help. Uh, just outside As the... you say through gridded <laughs> Uh, just outside the top eight, I've got the Raiders. Um, probably unlucky to, to be out of my eight um, just based on the way they finished last season. But if, if someone's going to come in, which I've got the Broncos yep. coming in, someone's got to drop out. And I don't think anyone else um, really will be. Tigers and Dogs, we spoke about missing the finals, but I don't think they're going to miss out by that much. I've got the Tigers in 10th, Dogs in 11th. Uh, I've got the not-so-mighty Red V in 12th spot. Um, don't think they'll be getting the spoon or the bottom four like a lot of people are predicting, um, but they're certainly going to be struggling to make the top eight, I would think, just given their, uh, you know, their middle forward rotation. Manly, um, look, it's going to come down to one man, isn't yeah. it, um, where they finish. Even if he does play the majority of the season, Tom Chaboy, which I don't think they're going to make the eight. Uh, Knights, Titans, Dolphins and the Warriors in the bottom four uh, for the 2023 season for me. But, you know, everyone, everyone's going to have different uh, opinions. You know, I'm sure... The boys down at Belmore think they're going to be finishing the top four after signing every player yeah. under the sun. And you know what? That's fair enough. Um, Tigers fans have room for optimism as well. But for me, those teams are missing out. And unfortunately, Warriors fans are yeah, probably looking at a wooden spoon this year. Okay. I can co-sign that. I like it. Uh, let us know below what your uh, top seven team this year yeah. now is. Uh, for what it's worth, I like the Warriors for the spoon. I don't think the Dolphins will get it either. But happy to wait and see what happens. Just a few weeks out from the NRL season. Can't wait.